Welcome everyone to this webinar on how to boost insurance collections. This is part one of our two part series on billing magic. Uh, next month we will be presenting another webinar on how to boost patient collections. So look forward to that. Uh, we are really excited today. We have a lot of great education information for you. Um, some of this may be uh, information you're aware of, some of it will be new to you, but we try to provide a great mix of education on this very, very important topic. I am your presenter. I'm Neil Kotari, the Chief Operating Officer of PracticeWeb. Uh, I, before PracticeWeb, I had a background in healthcare law and, and we dealt with a lot of insurance issues um, in that context. So I'm well aware of the uh, very difficult battle, daily battle that you all uh, face with insurance companies and trying to get the money that you are owed for the treatment that the quality treatment you're providing to your patients. And so that's really where we are a partner with you. We're side by side in this fight and we want to prepare you with the best tools and strategies available using practice web. So insurance collections, it's, it's a huge problem uh, that all of you face. And I want to go through some of the statistics behind it because it's important to understand the size of the problem. Sometimes it's, a, uh, it's subtle and it's hidden and you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what you're missing. So there was a recent uh, study done looking at what is the collection rate for practices uh, across the country. And I, I think this is personally a conservative number, a high estimate, but uh, the estimate or the, the data that they found was 91% collection rate, which uh, in turn means a 9% loss in collections. And so if you're looking at an average practice, let's say making at $1.5 million, that's $135,000 a year that you're lo losing annually. Um, and that's just a tremendous amount, um, which of course can vary and be even larger uh, depending on your practice. Now, if you extrapolate that, which is important to do, out to the lifetime of your practice, because it's not just a one-year problem, it's a lifetime problem, then you're looking at a more than $4 million uh, loss from not collecting what you are owed, uh, what the treatment you've already provided. So this is the problem that we are really excited to help you solve with PracticeWeb. So, you know, like I said, it's, this can vary. So you might be wondering, what is the size of my problem? Where, well, that's where you should certainly, after this webinar, do some math. If you don't know the numbers, you should uh, figure them out and we'll show you some ways to do that. But the formula essentially would be your annual insurance billing amount. And if you're not sure, how that uh, shape shakes out. You can look at your total collections number and, and about 80% is in the national average, so you could use that, but obviously it would be better if you know a better, a more specific percentage for your practice. And then you wanna look at the percentage of annual uncollected insurance benefits. Again, if you're not sure, then 9% is a good number to um, ballpark it. And then finally, how many years do you plan to practice dentistry? So. How long is this practice going to be around? What is the estimate for that? And, and just that gives you an idea of the size, overall size of the problem. And that translates into your lifetime loss from insurance collections. Now, um, when, we get, when we get to some of the strategies that we're going to talk about today, they're not all related to electronic insurance tools. Um, we're going to talk about, even if you're not using these tools, what you can be doing. But I do want to point out that a major a major tool or, or a strategy here is to use all of the electronic insurance services that are available uh, because it's going to really help you and we'll show you exactly how. So fortunately, most of you are using e-claims already at this point. Um, it used to be a new thing, but now it's a uh, commonplace. And so this graphic here is showing approximately how many minutes you can save per transaction. Uh, so every time you're trying to process a claim and, you know, work with a patient to get um, the insurance side figured out, you're going to be saving at least 30 minutes, about 30 minutes per patient. And this is just from using e-claims, electronic uh, eligibility check and verifications check, um, looking at using ERAs or electronic EOBs, um, processing your claim payments effectively, 
inquiring about claim status and fouling up on uh, outstanding claims and also using pre-authorizations where needed. So just to give you a sense of how much time you can save, and it's not only a time issue, again, it goes back to the money issue. So you're going to be much more effective and really capture that at least 9%, uh, if not more, of what you're losing right now. So with the uh, looking at just who is doing all of this, uh, who is adopting the electronic insurance tools that are out there, uh, well, we have, like I said, majority are using e-claims e or claim submission. Um, about half have now started using eligibility and benefits check electronically. 20% um, or so, or a little less than 20% using ERAs. And then, you know, if you get all the way down to claim status inquiry, it's really only 9% of practices that are utilizing all these tools, if that, right? So um, it's, it's really, there's a lot of room for growth there and a room for improvement in adopting the electronic insurance tools. So then we get into what are the productivity savings? Um, well, you're saving 30 minutes, as we said, um, if you're using all these tools, you're saving 30 minutes per transaction. Um, if you have, let's say 30 patients a day, multiply that. And then if you're looking at the average salary that we found for um, an assistant or someone in your on your team, and the, obviously that can vary by region and, and by position, but let's just put a number on it. Um, you're saving around 300 per day just from productivity savings because you're not spending all that time um, doing all these uh, from the start to finish processing all this um, insurance information, the claims, the benefits. And then if you extrapolate to five days a week, 52 weeks a year, you're saving close to $80,000 just in productivity from using these tools. And that's, again, not to include the fact that you're going to be solving that $4 million problem in terms of collecting what you're owed. So that's an addition to the to the earlier number. Um, and as I mentioned, only 9% are really, uh, if that, are adopting all of these tools. So that's just an introduction to this really important topic. Um, and we're going to get into some strategies here of how to boost collections. Hopefully, you're doing some of this. If it, you know, Some of you will learn a lot. Some of you will learn some hidden gems that you weren't aware of. So let's get right into that. And one thing I want to mention is if you have any questions, there is a Q&A option in the webinar um, that you're attending. And you can post any questions there, and I'll answer them um, as, as I can. So first topic we want to touch is verifying insurance benefits right before treatment. A lot of a lot of folks are doing this when the patient first first comes into the door, first appointment they do it, and then maybe annually or something to that effect. But it's really important, and now it's really easy to verify right before any major treatment in the office. So one thing you want to do, which is in Practice Web, is you want to use the insurance verification list. If you're not using this, I would highly recommend that you do. It's in the appointment list within the appointment module of Practice Web. And what you can do here is check every day, uh, and you can figure out what your schedule is, and that's a really big part of this, is have a protocol of how far in advance you want to verify those uh, benefits and eligibility um, information for patients. So it could be seven days in advance. Some f folks might do it the day before, but before the patient's coming in for their appointment, no matter what the treatment is, you should check if they're verified. Um, and so you do want to check every single person on the list and then add any notes. If there's some follow-up required, like let's say in this case, I gave an example here at the bottom that uh, John no longer has this plan, need to get updated insurance information from John. So now you're not going to um, miss that. You'll make sure, let's say if it's seven days out, you have a few days there to figure out what's going on with John um, make sure that he's still able to pay for that treatment if he's relying on that insurance to come through. So that that is a, a, another point is have good notes and next steps. Um, you can open each plan from here. If you just double click on each of these uh, line items, you can open each plan and you can enter benefits. If you're calling the insurance company and you're, um, and you can see at the bottom there, there's the insurance plan information, subscriber information. So it makes it really easy to call them and give all the information they usually ask for to locate the patient. But once you are going on that route, then you're talking to them, getting updated information. You can just double click and open up the plan. and Or as we're gonna talk about in a moment, where you can do a real time check by double clicking on each one and clicking a button, which I'll show you in a moment. So 
Um, and as I mentioned, all the insurance plan and subscriber information is at the bottom, convenient for you. So it's really easy to make these phone calls if that's how you're doing it. Um, or you can do the real-time check, which we'll talk about. So main thing here is definitely use your insurance verification list. And one thing with that is in the setup screen for this list, you can set defaults. So maybe you want to set a protocol for your practice um, and make sure everyone's following the same protocol, right? We don't want, we want consistency in all of these strategies. We want to consistently impl implement them every day and make sure that no one is doing anything different than anyone else. That's how you really steer the ship in the right direction, in the same direction. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. So with the insurance verification list, you can set how far in advance do we want to verify? Is it seven days, three days, one day? Um, and then also you can, you can see how often should we recheck benefits and eligibility? Maybe maybe they had an appointment, um, rec or let's say 108, uh, six months ago, but we wanna re-verify benefits every 90 days and eligibility every 30 days, right? So this is gonna make sure that the, not only how far in advance do you wanna check this stuff, but how often do you wanna recheck benefits and eligibility? And then um, another thing is that you can require verification if the plan's renewal date is after the last verification date. So this is kind of like if you have a situation where let's say you verified uh, 30 days before the new year and the new year comes around, they have another appointment coming up. Uh, well, as we know, many plans reset um, and some people, some patients change plans at the end of the year. So you wanna make sure that your filters don't miss that. So this is like an extra option to make sure to always verify service year plans. Uh, and this is done in the setup, insurance verification, and then you go to the appointment screen to, to get to this uh, section. Then we talk about um, another new feature that's coming up. It's, it's actually a, a heads up. It's gonna be coming up pretty soon when we release 20.5. Um, and this is gonna be a feature where you can change your appointment views to include a V on all the appointments where the insurance has not been verified. So this will just uh, be able to give you another heads up that you know, out of the 30 patients we have coming in today, 10 of them have not been verified. It'll have a V on there. And that's another thing that your front office can look for. This will eventually be available in the setup appointments and then appointment views screen where you normally set up your appointment views in practice web. Another thing when you're doing uh, manual verification, you wanna make sure you have a very good checklist. I'm sure a lot of you have a checklist that you're comfortable with, but I just wanted to remind you and emphasize this point that you're only as good as your checklist if you're doing manual verification. So if you're making those phone calls and or checking online portals for the benefits information, make sure everything that you need to get captured and put into practice web is on your checklist. This is an example that will include um, in our emails that we go that go out after this, but uh, Dentistry IQ put together a sample form here, and like I said, every every office might have a slightly different form that they're comfortable with, which is totally fine. This is just a suggestion or something to refer to. Make sure you're being comprehensive. This is the first part of the basic information. You know, this kind of stuff everyone I think gets, and then you get into more details. And are we getting all the frequency limitations covered when we're checking benefits? Are we looking for waiting periods, um, checking for how perio maintenance is handled, um, even things like our implants covered? So make sure everything is being captured when you're doing that verification. Now, like I said, you're, you're, you are losing precious time when you are doing the manual verification. Um, e ESS Dental Solutions, uh, big in, a big billing service company, has um, estimated about 20 to 45 minutes per call if you have to make a call. Luckily, nowadays you have some uh, dental dental carriers that provide online portals where you can check. It makes it much quicker. Um, it's still a manual process, but it's quicker than having to call and wait on the line. I've even seen tips. <laughs> this this has this problem has become so severe that I've seen tips where uh, folks say to call the patient line instead of the provider line, and sometimes those lines are have different hours and they're a little bit easier to get someone and then ask them to transfer you to someone in the provider department. And so there's all these like workarounds that people have come up with for phone calls. 
but it's just a headache and we all are aware of this. So we want to save you from that headache and it's really, really easy and very, very low cost. So there's really no reason not to do that. So let's talk about that. There's one option in practice web where you can go into any insurance plan and simply click on a button, the request button for requesting electronic benefits. And this is a service through claim connect um, dental exchange. And you know, if you're, even if you're not using them for e-claims, you can still use them for this purpose. And I'll, we'll talk about pricing for all these other services later on in the webinar. But this is just a really good strategy. Um, you click that button, you hit the request, and then it's going to allow you to import accurate benefits right into the plan. And they work with all the major insurance carriers, pretty much everyone that they can send e-claims to, which is Ev almost everyone, every single per every single carrier, they can get those benefits as well. So once you click that request button, it'll take you to another screen where it'll immediately check, get the information from the insurance company, and then allow and, sh and show you, here's all the information we grabbed. Now you can pick and choose what you actually import. If you want to, you know, maybe you put something in there already, you don't want to duplicate that, then you can ch pick and choose what to import and that gets right into the insurance plan. And this is a great, great uh, way to make sure everything is buttoned up on benefits information. And of course, it's checking eligibility as well. Another tool we have for this is uh, through a, a service called Smart Caller ID. Some of you are using this service, very, very useful. It has many applications to it, but one part of it is insurance verification. So with Smart Caller ID, you can instantly verify benefits in the Smart Caller ID pop-up. So you, if you're doing it just by patient, let's say you just make sure that patient is selected in Practice Web. You click the Patient Express uh, button at the top, and then you go to that insurance section that you see here on the screen. You click on the V button, and that'll verify all the benefits. Um, so this is really great, and also gets it right into the insurance plan automatically when you do that. So it's a great feature. Um, and also, if you want to see the benefits that are currently there, you can click on the I button and it'll show the detailed breakdown. This another, another great thing with this is that when a patient calls in, this will automatically pop up. It'll recognize the patient if that number is in your system. It'll automatically pop up. And while you're talking to the patient, if you need to discuss insurance, let's say it's an upcoming appointment and they have insurance questions, it will show you this information. You can click that. Uh, v button and automatically verify while they're, you're talking to the patient and yep you're good to go here are your benefits and we look forward to seeing you next tuesday uh, mrs smith so it's just that easy if they're calling in if you're making outgoing phone calls you can use this as well but even if you're not making any calls you can simply click on that button at the top and get the insurance benefits verified another nice feature of smart caller id is that you can schedule automatic daily verification of appointments for any number of days in advance. So let's say you like to do it the day before, you can set it up that day before you'll the, the system will try to verify every appointment on your schedule that's the next day. So everyone loves automation. Automation is the name of the game in 2021. So anything you can automate, you go for that. And so um, you'll see on your appointments, anything that has a V, a red V with a square on it, that means it's verified. And if not, then it won't have that. So now you know who you need to really um, dig in deeper and, and follow up with. Another uh, feature, um, and, and we'll move on to the next topic, is that you can manually bulk verify within a date range. So this, what I said, the automatic, automatic part, it's um, based on your schedule. So I want to do the appointment seven days from now, right? So that's one day at a time. You can bulk verify if you want to, just the entire, v, entire week or the entire month if you'd like. Um, there's also a feature to do that. So that strategy was verify, verify, verify before treatment, uh, especially major procedures, but I would do it as much as possible. And that's really going to make sure you are getting the best um, chance for reimbursement and it'll help you identify any insurance problems before you go too far and get into that treatment. The next point I wanna emphasize is to uh, get pre-authorizations with attachments through Practice Web. Um, obviously, pre-authorizations are not required every time for every procedure, but whenever they're required or when you think it would be useful, um, and that's your really your decision and based on your insurance plans, 
um, definitely use the pre-authorization feature in Practice Web. And that's done right through the treatment plan. Um, and you can just select the procedures in the treatment plan, what, wh whatever else you want to pre-authorize. Click the pre-authorization button, and it'll take you to that pre-auth screen. And one thing there is, you know, it's not showing up here on this screenshot, but if you look closely, there's a general tab, which if you're using claims and practice web, you're familiar with the general tab. And there's a lot of uh, information you can put there. But one thing you should try to put is um, a short claim note of what this is all about. Uh, generally, or sometimes, I wouldn't say generally, but sometimes they do require attachments of various sorts, like imaging, um, narratives, et cetera, longer narratives. So then you want to use a attachments um, feature for that. So one feature we have is integrated attachments through Claim Connect uh, as well. And that's going to be a recurring theme here because we have about four or five tools that are all integrated through Claim Connect. Um, but you can use integrated attachments or you can do the more manual approach, which is if you create your attachments through a service like NEA, you, you would get that uh, attachment ID and then put it into the claim. And that screen's not here, but it's if you look closely, there's a DXC tab and an NEA tab. So if you click on that NEA tab, you can put in that ID if you're using a different service. So if you have a claim attachment ID, you can put it in there manually. So what, however you get it done, make sure you're doing your attachments because the data is clear that that's really going to help you get that pre-authorization processed and make sure it's not rejected. Um, with the integrated attachment tool, you can attach any image and categorize it appropriately. So here's an example of that. Um, those of you who are already using this, would, would this would be familiar to you. But you can attach any image, categorize it, Let's say it's an X-ray or um, a narrative. You can categorize that. And then you can put multiple images into one attachment. When you're done, you click OK. And you now will have that automatically included in your electronic claim. So how easy is that? It doesn't get, doesn't get much easier than that for attachments. It, it generally has been a pain to do it uh, in a separate portal and then bring the ID in. But now we've made it super easy. So really important for pre-auths to have that information. Once you've created the pre-auth, you can track that status of it in the top right of the treatment plan. So if you're ever going back to that treatment plan, you can say, hey, what did that get pre-authorized or did that get authorized or not? And you can see the status there. Um, in this case, it's waiting in the waiting status. But once it's sent, it'll be a different status there. And then you can uh, tell if it's been received or not. And, and then double click on that to check if you want to read the documentation from the insurance company. So great thing to, to use pre-authorization when needed or when helpful. Another strategy to boost your collections uh, on the insurance side is, of course, to submit claims with proper information and documentation. This is really the biggest reason why I would say that um, you're missing out on your collections that you're, you're owed. Uh, just some simple errors and some more subtle errors. So one statistic from Dentistry IQ was that about 50% of claims are put in a pending or return um, status because of claim errors. And you know that's that's just a big amount. It hopefully it's less than that for you, but nevertheless, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a problem for everyone. Um, what are the reasons, right? What are the reasons that we have claim problems? So 35% of the time, uh, this is again from a, another study but done by Dentistry today. 35% of the time, it's incorrect patient, practice, provider, or employee employer info, all things that can be easily avoided, right? So a big problem is easily solvable just with proper protocols and just being careful. Um, another big problem is supporting documentation hasn't been sent, and that's what we just talked about with pre-authorizations. Um, make sure those attachments and supporting docs are there to, to get everything processed. Another problem is another issue is that insurance company wants more information. So it could be it's kind of similar to supporting documentation, but they just want some more information um, that that is not included in the original claim. And then another issue that can be easily resolved, um, especially if you're doing eligibility check and, and the real time check that we talked about, is that the insurance plan or benefits are not set up correctly. There's something wrong. Maybe subscriber, well, subscriber ID might go back to the patient uh, problem, but uh, there's something like a group number or something's not set up correctly, um, or you just 
got the benefits wrong and you thought you were going to get something and it was just had wrong benefits information. Um, last couple of problems, the staff doesn't know how to handle complicated situations like dual insurance, blended families, and that can throw things off on claims. Um, or uh, the claim is just not received by insurance. And so something happened in submission. With electronic submission, it's very rare. I mean, once it's sent, it's sent. So, But if you're doing printing uh, claims, there's definitely more room for error there. Something wasn't sent out. Um, or as we're going to talk about later in this webinar, maybe you thought you sent something out electronically, but it just never got sent. And there's going to be um, reports to help you capture that. So one major thing, as we mentioned, is include the correct and required info and documentation on all claims. The biggest thing, and that's why I put it in red here, is confirm all patient, provider, plan, and procedure details. I would say the four Ps. Confirm all four Ps before creating the claim. You know, don't get into the claim and then having to back out of it and something's wrong or hopefully, or you don't even catch it. Just confirm, I mean, provider information should be pretty easy to just have that correct all the time. Um, but the patient stuff, the subscriber plan details and procedures too. And we're gonna talk about procedures uh, later on of choosing the right codes, but making sure all of that is correct. Then this is a big uh, thing that we see um, from time to time is that folks are not completing the prosthesis information. So as you can see in this claim screen, the bottom left in that general tab, a very important tab, that if you're doing a crown bridge or denture, there is required information for that. So you want to make sure that you're recording that correctly. Um, also, if there's ortho treatment, make sure the ortho stuff is filled out. If you're using our ortho features in practice web, it, this is done usually automatically, but I would just confirm that it's all correct down there. And then if there's a referral involved to make sure if that's required or that information is helpful, that it's entered in the claim. Another thing is to add short um, treatment relevant or required claim notes um, in that bottom right section. If you need to put a longer note, use narrative attachments. There are um, some limitations to the claim note in terms of how much you can write there, um, but we'll, I'll mention that in a, in a moment. But if it's a short note, put it there. Make sure it's treatment related. I, I've also heard that if you submit claims with just um, hopeful, wishful affirmations like, we need this claim to be paid within seven days, um, that can actually delay a claim. So don't put things in there that shouldn't be, be there in the claim note. It can cause a delay in processing. Just put treatment relevant information uh, to get paid. Um, again, with regular claims, so we talked about pre-authorizations, but with regular claims as well, use integrated attachments, or if, if you don't have integrated attachments, use the NEA approach, the manual approach of putting in the attachment ID, but somehow get your attachments in the claim um, for x-rays, imaging, perio charts, narratives, di diagnostic reports, referrals, and anything else that you think would be helpful. Another thing, another good strategy is to use default claim notes where helpful. So if you find that you're writing the same claim note in certain procedures, it might be helpful to um, put that in there. Just be careful with, you know, if it's not relevant to a particular claim, like I said, it could delay processing. So uh, it's a very useful feature, but just be careful that it's not going to um, cause problems in certain claims. But besides that, I think it's very helpful. Here's an example with a perio uh, procedure, you can put in a, a basic, you know, this was necessary to remove this uh, micro biota um, in microorganisms, microorganisms uh, to prevent further bone loss. And so that that length of a note is certainly fine. Um, we do have a uh, guidance on that. So if you're printing the claim, it's it's roughly 20, 200 characters that are allowed. This note that I'm showing you right now is less than, I believe, less than 200 characters. But if you're printing it, it's 200. If you're doing electronic using the 5010 format, which is what you should be using um, now, it, then you have 400 characters. So you have more room to play with on that default claim note. Uh, the other thing that we've seen is with um, certain procedures like PAs, uh, certain companies are, uh, we've heard that with PAs, a lot of companies are requiring um, you to have the tooth selected or the treatment area um, as the tooth in the claim. Otherwise, they won't, um, they won't reimburse. So one thing you can do, if you find that a majority of the time that the procedures are requiring 
um, treatment areas to be identified on the claims. So the PA is just one example, but there could be others. Then you can go in into the procedure and change the treatment area. Uh, so you, right now your PA might say mouth on it or have a mouth as the treatment area. You might want to change that to tooth if you think that's going to be helpful. And now every time you put in a PA, it'll require you to put in the tooth number and that'll also show up on the claim. So you won't forget to do that. It'll actually require you to put that on because of how you set up the procedure. So this could be something you look into. Um, the PA is, like I said, just one example. There could be other procedures where the treatment area might not be correctly um, marked in the procedure. So just look, check that out and see if that's going to help you uh, save problems later with the claims. Another thing is every year, um, this, even though uh, it seems it seems obvious, but every year uh, we find that clients are not updating their procedure codes and we make it really easy. If you're on support, you get upgrades every year, usually around December. Um, where you'll get the latest uh, ADA codes. And as you know, ADA updates their procedure codes every year. Um, usually not a whole bunch of changes, but some of those changes can really throw you off. So just make sure to run the procedure code tool at the beginning of every year, um, as soon as you get that upgrade. And that's under the lists and then procedure codes and tools, it, there's an option. And once you open that, it'll have this uh, box that I just identified here and then just run that tool and that'll automatically update your ADA codes make sure you're on the latest and greatest so that can really cause problems if you're not using the right codes now when it gets to that's that's one thing is having updated CDT uh, CDT codes the other thing is making sure you choose the right code for the work that you're doing now we can't provide advice on that we're not on the clinical side but Definitely that can cause claim issues and, and a lot of claim issues if you're not choosing the right code for the right work. So uh, word to the wise to be very careful. Continue to educate your team on that. Um, another thing is use the latest claim form. This is not as commonly changed as the uh, CDT codes which are changed every year. We've seen the ADA change the claim forms usually every few years. Um, recently, I think they did it uh, in 2018 and 19, I think they were making some small changes, but generally speaking, it doesn't change that often, but just make sure you're on the latest. Um, this is just to show you that the current one is 2019 and that's what we have in practice web. So you would go to um, the, uh, let me go back to that. You would go to the claim form uh, setup section, which is under setup and then, and then insurance and then claim forms, and just make sure that the ADA 2019 form is set as default for all your claims. Now, those are a lot of tools and strategies for the claims that you're submitting. Um, but <laughs> if you're not even submitting the claims to begin with, then you have a bigger problem or, or a different problem. So strategy number four is to bill insurance for all of your work. And there's a couple of great ways to make sure you do this. Now, this um, section of the manage module is kind of your HQ when it comes to claims and a lot of great things that'll save pain for you, um, avoid pain. And so one thing is going to that, using that send claim. So let me go back to that to show you the send claims button. And this will allow you to do a, many different things here. So number one is make sure you send all claims that are in waiting status on a daily basis. I say daily because one of the other reasons why claims are denied is because of um, delayed filing, right? Untimely filing. And we want to prevent that. It's easily preventable. It's just uh, we don't want to procrastinate or lose lose sight of this. So daily, 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 I would say is is best. Um, if you do it weekly, that, that might be OK. But just as often as possible, go into this area. And anything that's in a waiting status will show up here. And make sure to get those processed. Maybe there's a couple things you have to, to finalize in there. Finalize that. You can double click on any of these claims from this screen and then get them uh, all ready to go. and then submit as a batch. So that's number one. <clears throat> number one is to send claims in the waiting status. Another one is to look at procedures that are not billed. So that's a great way to catch things um, and make sure that you get those uh, claims billed. So if I go back to the previous screen, you'll see at the top there, there's a, <clears throat> a button called procs not build. So you can access 
these things from the reports section of practice web but we recommend going through the manage module because it's all there in one screen essentially so sending your waiting claim uh the waiting status claims checking procedures not build and looking at your outstanding claims can all be done from the screen so procedures not build is super important um, it's easy to have procedures fall through the cracks so we don't want that to happen and when you click on that screen you can check everything that's not built yet but has been completed and you can create the claim right from this screen so there's really no reason not to do this it's super easy you just highlight the claims the the procedures you want to create the claim for click the new claim button at the bottom and you're on your way for that so check this also on a daily basis um, another thing with this is uh, outstanding claims so as i mentioned earlier there's that outstanding claims option in that same screen so let's take a look at that and tracking your outstanding claims because that's really the third part of this uh, cycle, right? So the first part is procedures not built to insurance, make sure those are captured and have a claim associated with them. Then claims that are created but not sent, make sure those are sent. And then lastly is track your outstanding claims that have already been sent out and figure out what's going on there. So with that, we have the outstanding claims report, which again can be accessed from that same uh, send claim screen if you want, or from the reports screen in Practice Web. And for this report, you can uh, really really hone in on what's going on so as you can see in this example there's about twelve thousand dollars that's outstanding um, and you want to make sure that all of that is captured so going through these line by line so and hopefully your list is a lot shorter i just use this for illustration purpose but um, if not then you know you have plenty of work cut out for you but just go through this line by line and figure out what's going on um, you can also use a feature called custom tracking status and you can see I've um, identified that at the bottom where you can update custom tracking. But what that essentially does is if you want to create some custom statuses for what's happening with this claim that's outstanding, you can do that through the definition screen in Practice Web under Setup, Definitions, and then I believe it's called Custom Tracking Statuses or Claim Custom Tracking. And that will allow you to just have a little bit of like a short um, note on what's happening, do we need to resubmit this? Do we need to review it further? Is it on like a holding pattern? So you can create your own statuses, but even if you're not doing that, um, you can still make sure to go through this list and you know, get these all cleared, hopefully. Call the, call the plans, you can see at the bottom there, you can see the plan information, subscriber information, so really easy to make phone calls. And then if you need to resubmit from here, let's say you call them and say, yeah, that's actually about to be denied because you're missing uh, such and such attachment, maybe an, an image or a narrative, you can easily double click on any of these claims from here and um, add that attachment and resubmit. So we'll talk about resubmitting at the end of this webinar, but you can resubmit from here as well if you need to. So just make sure to track this on a daily basis. Um, and then uh, let me see, what, let me go back here for a sec. Yeah, so that's what I was mentioning, double click and you can attach anything you need to and resubmit. Um, another thing is to investigate any problematic payers. So the way you can identify this is go to um, the reports section, the monthly, and then insurance aging report. And there's a box you wanna select. If you wanna look at it by carrier, you can select the box for only show patients with outstanding claims. And that'll show the carrier information along with just the, the AR that's for each patient. Um, and so that'll essentially create this report and you can just identify hey it looks like delta dental is is um is not uh is not in a good shape here and something's going on there so maybe there's a pattern you can pick up on and just see which carriers are causing the most headaches and either you need to talk to them or maybe it's something about all of those claims that's being done incorrectly or um, could be improved so identify problematic pairs this is not something you have to check every day but you can certainly check on a monthly basis what's going on there so that's and and also you can just see what your insurance aging looks like at a high level of what's out there so that's another good strategy um, now then we get into streamlining insurance payments how can we streamline insurance payments and make that process quick and easy. So once you get paid, which is great, um, we still wanna make sure that process is going quickly. So frequently insurance companies will do batch insurance checks and uh, some of you may be using this tool of, of doing batch insurance payments, that, which is great, but if you're not, certainly use this. You can also do it claim by claim, go into each individual account, but I highly recommend 
using batch insurance from the manage module, and that'll help you um, do it much quicker. So these are just uh, this is showing a list of sample batch insurance payments, but let's add a new one. So we click on that add button in the bottom left, and it'll um, ask you at some point it ask you for the carrier that you want that this payment is re is uh, related to. So you don't even have to type in the whole carrier; you can just put it delta, and then it'll pull up. What it does, it pulls up all the outstanding claims for that carrier, which is really great. You don't have to search for them. And then you can just now pick from a short, much shorter list of which claims are on this batch EOB. Then what you would do is just enter payments for each claim by double clicking on them. And then uh, once you've entered the payment, you attach it, click the attach button, and it goes right to that batch EOB. As you can see here, I've so far entered two of them. There's there's more because the payment amount is 1500 I've attached two uh, worth uh, $220 roughly. So I have more to do here, but just to show you that how that's how you attach them. After you double click on each claim and, and finalize the payment, you can then attach it to the EOB, batch EOB. Um, another thing is to use electronic EOB. So we talked about that at the uh, earlier part of this webinar, how useful this is. So this is really, if you're interested in going paperless and you wanna speed up processing, not wait for getting things in the mail and you know that can sit sit on your desk for a while and you know it's not getting processed quickly because just whenever anything is um, requires more time and effort there's always more risk for delay and if there's more risk for delay there's more risk for you know slowing down your cash flow and potentially even hurting your collections so reduce that friction in the process reduce the steps in the process and you'll have great results it's like these simple kind of tinkering of the gears can have exponential results for your practice. So one of that, it, one of that is the uh, ERA process. So that's again electronic EOB, and that you can sign up with uh, Claim Connect to get ERAs going with Practice Web. What that does is it automatically downloads the uh, electronic EOBs periodically, and you can set it up for a daily daily process. Um, and actually. I think you can do it every few minutes if you'd like to. So it just depends how often you wanna get that going, but um, we can help you set that up after you sign up with Claim Connect. And that goes for all of these things. If there's any external service like Claim Connect, we will help you get it going in Practice Web on support. But going back to this, it will automatically download the ERAs and link them up to the right claims because when you're sending out the e-claims, uh, it's a whole kind of closed circle process. So you send out the claim, and then the claim gets reviewed, and then you get the EOB back electronically. It's all tied together. Um, so it'll identify that same claim. And now you don't even have to do that batch insurance process I was talking about just a moment ago. Um, so you go to the screen within the managed module ERAs. You pull up your ERAs that are unprocessed. And let's just take an example. You double click on one of them to see the attached claim payments. Here's one. You would double click on the claim payment you want to process. So here, you know, you might have 10 listed in this screen, it's the section at the bottom, but here's one of them. And you would double click that. It's really quick. You just look at it. You can review all the remarks that the insurance company has provided, what they're going to be reimbursing, um, and the EOB, if you want to look at the EOB. I'll show you an example of the EOB in a moment. Uh, then you verify everything. If everything looks good, you just click OK and you're done. If something looks off, you can um, kind of manually edit it or in inquire further. But once it's done, you click OK, and then you go back. Once all of your claims under that batch EOB have been finalized and reviewed, you just click on Finalize Payment, and you're all done. That's the whole process for the batch EOB. And you can see how much quicker that is. And on top of that, it's all paperless. You're not having to go get the mail and open up mail and all of that or look at anything in email. It's all right here. So that's a great process. Um, it really will speed up cash flow and boost collections. Um, and here's an example of an ERA. Uh, if you if you ever want to look at, it. I mean, the, all this information. If you go back, you can see um, on this earlier screen here. So if you look in the remarks section at the top right, you can see all the remarks are there. Um, so all the detail is here. You don't really have to go to the underlying ERA or EOB, but you can if you really want to. So sometimes people like looking at it in that format and just making sure they understand what's happening. So this is something you can check as well if you're using that. And the last thing I wanted to cover is to resubmit claims effectively. Um, hopefully 
you have a good process for this, but how we recommend doing it is to resubmit a denied claim. This could be a denied pre-authorization. It could be a, just a regular claim. You could have caught it. Maybe, um, like I said, you if you're doing the outstanding claims report and you're calling an insurance company and they tell you that this is about to be denied and here's why, then you can quickly um, nip that in the bud and resubmit right from that screen. So no matter how you're resubmitting, this is the same steps. So you open the same claim that was denied or it's about to be denied, let's say, and then you correct any information that was incorrect, um, if that's the case. Maybe there's maybe there's a attachment missing, so you would do that. But of course you wanna put a claim note uh, that saying that you're, re you're resubmitting this claim number and attach the EOB to this resubmission so they can see the previous one. In the in the example of a denied claim, you wanna attach the EOB. You can do that through integrated attachments as, we, as we've been talking about. And then just mention that I'm also resubmitting with attached imaging in, in a narrative, if that's the case. And once all of the attachments are done, you've corrected anything that was incorrect, um, then you can click send. Now, if the <clears throat> subscriber information was wrong or the plan was wrong, obviously you have to create a new claim for that. But if you can just revise the same claim and just maybe there's some information missing, you can provide that. Um, and again, going back to integrated attachments, it's so useful. So I'm pointing it out here. If you need to resubmit, and frequently it's because of this, um, something was missing, then you can do that right from within the claim screen and send it out. So. That was a very quick tour of a lot of great strategies. Um, luckily, this webinar is recorded. You can go back and you'll be able to pause and rewatch anything. Um, but I do think with all of these strategies that we've covered, uh, you if you are doing all of them, you will see a huge boost in your collections. Now, some of you may think, well, I know most of this, or we're doing we're doing some of this, but I would I would really encourage you to go check. Is is your team really implementing all of this? Are they doing it consistently? Do you have protocols in place? Um, is someone quality checking that? Is someone going back and looking at if it's being done, auditing your processes? So there's a lot, there's a lot, to, sometimes a gap between what you think you're doing, what you have told people to do or asked them to do and what's actually being done. So there, that's definitely where auditing and quality checking is important. But I, I'm, I'm very confident that not everyone is doing everything we've covered today. And I think it'll be really help you boost your insurance collections. So if you, um, want help in implementing these strategies, definitely contact our support team. I'm gonna look at our Q&A right now. Um, so someone asked if uh, where to look if pre-authorizations were approved, and you can check that in the treatment plan module if you wanna check there um, for that patient. And like I said, in the top right, it'll update the status. So it'll say um, whether it was received, et cetera. And you can just double click on that and, and open it up and look at the EOB if someone attached that when they um, process that claim in, in your team. So that's that's really where you wanna look. If you're using ERAs, then you'll also get the pre-authorizations um, electronically, and then you'll process it that way that we just showed you. So that's where you would check to look if pre-auths were approved. Um, and I don't see any other questions at the moment, but uh, we did cover a lot of ground. So like I said, reach our support team. Another thing with our support team, you can call us, email us, but a great way is just to go to our website if you click on, and I think even within the uh, software, yeah, that's that's correct, within the help menu, there's a support option, but that'll essentially take you to the same page on our website. So if you're on our website, click on support, and there's a request support form, that's really quick and just type out the question and we'll call you as soon as uh, we get that. Um, or you can just call us, like I said, and, and talk to a live person. Another thing I wanna cover is, we covered a couple of tools that um, are really going to revamp and boost your processes for insurance collections. Uh, one is Smart Caller ID. We do have a 30 day free trial. So to me, if anything has a 30 day free trial and it's and it seems like it's gonna help our practice, I'm trying that. Because uh, there's no risk there, but after you, after it's proven, it's proven itself to you. You're going to boost collections, I think, by thousands and thousands from this tool. So the nominal cost of 149 a month is really um, paying for its paying for itself many times over. And that's a 50% off um, deal that we have through the end of this month. With Claim Connect, we have a lot of uh, services you can use. If you're not using eClaims with them, that's 37 cents a claim, uh, $25 a month for attachments like we kept referring to. 
and the $20 a month for real-time benefits check and eligibility. And then you have $10 a month for electronic EOBs. Um, these are the latest prices that we were made aware of, but uh, to confirm all that, I do encourage you to call Claim Connect. They will give you accurate, you know, to the to the day pricing, and they may have package deals as well. For I, I do believe they have a package deal for a lot of these services. So reach out to Claim Connect. Um, we'll include their contact information in our email, but uh, if you go to dentalexchange.com, you can also see their contact over there. And then finally, if you're not on support, uh, we have a great deal for support, $99 a month. You're gonna save about 360 per year with that deal. And with that, you get all the upgrades, uh, technical support will help you with all these kind of strategies that we've talked about one-on-one, -on -one, give you any type, any type of consultation you need on this. And um, you get a lot of free services as well, like mobile forms and um, a practice analyzer tool. And there's a lot of other great things we include with support. So definitely that's like the lifeline of your software. You don't want to get out that lifeline. You want to you want to just be on that lifeline. You get everything great that comes with it, and we'll help you out. So, and of course, we talked about the C the CDT codes and the claim forms and all of that stuff. And we're always enhancing. Like I said, in version twenty point five, we're adding that V for verification on the appointment block. So that's a relatively smaller feature, but that's still a really useful feature. And then there's a lot of really big features that we add with all of our upgrades. So you'll get that if you're on support. And then lastly, I want to plug our social media because if you've if anyone has checked it out, it's really you know active. We're giving a lot of education, a lot of we had some great articles on insurance collections recently. So it's free. Why not? Why not subscribe? Definitely uh, stay up to date on how the software you're using right now to run your entire practice can be optimized and can be maximized to ultimately boost your productivity and revenue, right? So let's connect with Practice Web on social media. Thank you very much. Um, reach out to our sales team as well if you have any questions on those services that we mentioned and really watch back this web webinar once we send it out very soon and you'll have a great um, educational tool to boost your insurance collections by thousands and thousands of dollars. And if it works out for you, let us know. We wanna hear your great stories. Thank you again, everyone, and, um, and, and we will be back uh, next month for that How to Boost Patient Collections webinar. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.